Okay, in this video, I'm just going to talk about frames and also about the quit function in Python. Uh, not in Python, into Kinter, which is language in Python. Okay, so I've got our import set up, I've got the window set up, and I've got the window main loop to start the main loop. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is frames. You're probably thinking, what the heck is a frame? Well, a frame is something that you can put inside of a Tekinta window and you can put items within that frame. So, for example, you could put a button inside the frame or you could put a label inside of the frame, for example, right? So, let's make a frame. So, we're going to say that a frame is equal to label frame. That's the constructor for a frame, by the way. We're going to put it inside of the window. I'm going to say the text is equal to this is a frame and we're going to give it a padding x dimension and a padding y dimension we'll make them equal to i don't know let's say seven right each one equal to seven you don't actually have to space uh, this i can get rid of these spaces it doesn't really matter i just decided i would for whatever reason and we're going to say a frame dot pack, right? I'm going to pack this in there. We should actually give a pad x and a pad y argument. I'm going to say that pad x is equal to 15 and that pad y is also equal to 15. Now, don't worry about this padding just right now. I'll explain that to you later. Now, let's run this code and see what happens. Let's see what the frame looks like. So here's window.mainloop, and we are running. Oh dear, what's this? Some sort of error? No, it's not an error. So what's happened here is when you actually create a frame, if you don't have anything in the frame, the frame won't appear. So it exists within this window, but because there's nothing inside of the frame, i.e. a button or a label or whatever, there's now nothing inside of this window, right? So it does exist, this frame, you just can't see it. Simple as. So let's copy and paste this. Let's put something inside of this frame so that we can see the frame and see what I mean by it's basically something inside of the window that contains something else within it, right? So let's make a button. We'll say my button, and we'll say it's equal to a button. We'll give it a window. No, no. No, we won't give it a window. Messed up there. So, when you specify this first argument of where you're going to put your label or your frame, you usually add it to the main window. Here, with button, what we want to do is we want to add this button to the frame. And the frame is called a frame. So I'm not adding it to the window, even though I uh, forgot for a minute. I'm actually adding it to the frame. I'm going to say first button that's what we're going to call it right and that's actually all we need for the button okay and we're going to say my button dot pack okay now let's see what happens when we load this up now you can see that we've got a frame this is a frame we've got our first button here right i click it and it doesn't do anything because it's got no command to do anything but it doesn't matter it's more the fact that we've built this frame and this button now let's uh, let's move on a little bit and talk about the pad x and pad y so when you make a frame you can actually see that there's some padding in between the frame and the element or elements within the frame right and this first padding when you actually make the frame is the padding between the frame and the element okay and we've given it seven i don't know probably seven pixels of y and x which is one or the other anyway it doesn't really matter now this second bit when we pack it or we add it to a grid or whatever however we want to add it to the main window this bit of padding here is the padding between the frame element itself and the window okay so the first bit where we make the label is the padding between the label and the element or elements within it and the second padding when we actually add the label to a window or at the frame sorry to a window or maybe another frame 
is the space between this frame and the element it's contained in, whether that be a window or another frame or whatever, right? So we're going to play around with this a little bit. We're going to play around with this internal one. We're going to copy and paste that. We're going to make it a lot bigger so you can see quite clearly uh, what it's responsible for and what changing it is going to do. Okay, so let's get a couple of those. We don't need that little comment line there at all. Paste that. And we're going to change this to 70. Okay, so we're going to change the pad X and pad Y of the actual frame and the frame constructor argument. And we're just going to see what happens. And you can see that there is a massive space between the frame and its element, right? Because of the padding that we've declared here. Okay, so it's 70 away from the frame, both in terms of X and Y. I can't remember which is which, it doesn't really matter. You can see quite visually uh, the effect that this is having, right? So we'll get rid of that. You can obviously tell what's happening there. Copy this again. I'm going to do double work by copying that and not copying the uh, above loop, but it's not really relevant, doesn't really make a difference. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make these back into seven so that you don't see all that space between the frame and its inner element. And we're actually going to make these 150 each. And you're going to see, hopefully, a massive space between the frame and the element it's in, which is actually going to be window in this case, right? So you can see right now there isn't much space between the frame and the element inside of it because we've reduced this padding back to seven. But because we've turned made this padding up to 150 now, you can see that there's a very large amount of space in between the frame and the edge of the window when it first renders. You can actually change all the space just by you know doing this just changing the proportions but it renders you know it renders with a certain amount of space and it's designed uh, to have this amount of padding when it first renders right let's get rid of that so you're thinking okay that's cool that's all i need to know about frames and such no it isn't actually so i'm just going to copy and paste not this one but the first one because it's got regular proportions essentially just paste this down here. Bit of fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something really strange. So normally, let's say you were adding an element to a window. If you pack the first element, the element after it, you can't add it to a grid because it's been randomly packed into the window. So you have to choose between grid or pack whenever you decide to put an item into a window or an element, right? However, the frame itself, because it can contain items in it, but it doesn't have an item in it when it first rendered, can either have an item packed into it or gridded into it. Because essentially a frame is like a window within a window, right? So anything that's at the same level as the frame will have to be packed or gridded or basically inserted in the same way that the frame is, right? But anything that's within the frame... Um, or the first item within the frame can be added to a grid within the frame even if the frame is packed into the window or it can be packed into the frame i'll show you what i mean by that so instead of my button dot pack we're going to put my button dot grid okay and we're going to say that row is equal to zero column equal to zero right and then we're going to say my button two dot grid at uh, my button two is equal to button add any add a frame because we're putting it inside of the frame i'm going to say the text is equal to second button quite simple stuff and we're actually going to put it inside of our grid now and we're going to say row is equal to one column equal to one right we're going to make a third button as well just so you can see a few examples we'll say my button we're going to say button is attached to the frame and let's say the text is equal to third button okay i say my button 
3.grid and we're going to say row equals one column equals two quite simple right now when we run this you should see three buttons see that first button second button third button and even though this is packed these can be gridded in because as i say they're attached to a frame which is essentially separate from the main window and is essentially its own window within the window right so these can all be gridded together right however if i copy and paste this right I go down a little bit and i just decide hey you know what I'm going to make a label and I'm going to say label one is equal to label, let's say window, let's say text is equal to our label. I'm going to say label one dot grid and we're going to, going to say row equals one column equals one. We'll get rid of this now so you've seen it. What do you think is going to happen when we run this? I already know, but let's see. Cannot use geometry manager grid inside, which already has slaves managed by pack. So what's happened is this label is not inside of the frame. This label is inside the window. And you can't have an item inside an, el an element within an element um, that's, you know, added by the grid method if there's already a packed item. Similarly, you couldn't add a packed item if this was gridded. So if the A frame the A frame was actually added via grid, this would be fine because this is the level of window, right? And it would also be grid. But because it's pack and this is grid, there's a conflict because they're both in window here, right? I'll copy and paste this one above here again. And we'll try it with the buttons. We'll say that the third button, we'll try and pack the third button. Try and pack the third button. And you'll see again a conflict, but it'll be the opposite conflict. Can I use geometry manager pack inside label frame which already has slaves managed by grid? So we get the opposite problem. Because they're all grid and this is a pack, it's not compatible because it's within this frame and all the items within one window or one frame have to be inserted by the same mother whether it's grid or pack they all have to be the same okay it's quite simple that's all there is to the grid and pack um, insertion methods now the final thing i wanted to show you is just something called quit and it's actually a very very easy uh, easy function we'll copy and paste that one from above again well i'll just paste it again actually so we'll paste this and that's in a grid so that's really great but we're going to give it a command and we're going to say the command is equal to window dot quit okay that's it that's all we want to do let's see what dot quit does i'm not sure why i've got two there but that's Okay, yeah, yeah, I haven't closed the rest of them. Need to close them all up first. Right, we're going to say the third button is equal to quit as well. We're going to call it quit. Hopefully, I don't get three boxes. <laughs> Could happen, but hopefully it doesn't. So I've just got one box. And here it says quit. I click the first button, second button, and as you know, there's no command attached to them, so they do nothing, right? Quit. Actually, it should actually get us out of the main loop. Oh, it, it has got out of the main loop. So it's got out of the main loop. It's just not responding. It's going a bit AWOL because it didn't really like the way I did that. Um, I'll leave Python to it. But yeah, essentially quit is just used to escape the main loop. So if, if you wanted to have a button that escapes the main loop, or let's say you made a game or something and you wanted a certain action to just fry the game or quit it or someone tries to do something in a manner that's not supposed to happen and you don't agree with it well you can just use the quit to force quit but in some installations of python 
you might end up with problems like this. <laughs> Anyways, that was the video. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed.